So let's get into the system. So we'll open our VDI. So we are into our VDI and let's open our SAP logon. So just double click on this. Then we have system listed. So we can enter our credential here. And yesterday we have discussed regarding client, user password, passwords and logon language. So let's enter the password here. Yeah, so we are into our system. So let's go to SE38 transaction code by entering into command line. So yeah, we are here. And in program search bar, we need to enter our program name. So this is the program what we have created yesterday. So let's check this. So yesterday we have seen multiple variants of write statement. So now we'll check some of the conditional statements here. So currently this screen is on display mode. So to enable it for any editing, we click on this button that is display to change. This toggles between display and change. So you can see the screen color got white from blue. So that means we can enter or we can edit the program here. So we we'll check for conditional operators. So if it's, so by the name, it is saying conditional. That means if we are needed to check any value, whether it's less than, greater than, or less than equal to, or greater than equal to, then in that case, we use conditional operators. So what is the syntax? Just you write if, then you can see on top of if, one suggestion came so you just simply press control plus space so let's see check whether the user which has logged in into this system is best or not Okay, so for that, we need to access the system variable name. So, yesterday we have seen to access any system variable, we write SYU name. And after that, we are getting multiple options like and, between, equivalent, in, is, not, between, not, in, or. So, we will write here equal to. B E S T that is the current name. So in first section, the true condition is written. So we will write here And in else part, 
will write other user. Let's check how it works. So for executing any one of the report, we need to first activate it. Then once activated and once we get this success message that object activated a green signal on the status bar, we can execute it. And for execution, we have seen there are different ways. First option is to click on this direct processing. Second option is click F8 button from your keyboard. And the third option is from the program, you can directly activate and execute it. So, yeah. So, uh, let me comment all the others. To comment and uncomment, I mean, to toggle between comment and uncomment, you can click on control plus comma. So that will comment our code in the editor. And to uncomment, the same control plus dot will be used. So here it is there. So yeah, the current user is best. So that is why this condition is getting uh, checked. And at the compile time, this is the true condition. So the first one is executed. Let's check with some other variable. Let's say if we are writing one is greater than two. So this condition is false. So it should come into the other section. So in other section, in else part, we have written false. So yeah, this condition is false because one is not greater than two. So this is one variant simple with if and else. If we want to check other variant of if else, then Let's create a variable name as age. So we will create, let me remove this first. Yeah, so data. So any variable we create in SAP ABAP, then we write keyword as data. So after data, we can write our variable name. So let's say we are defining age variable. And what will be its type? So its type will be int4. That is an integer of 4 byte. So if you'll see what are the other options for integer, then we have int8. That means integer 8, int4. And we can write some i. Let's try to activate it, whether it allows or not. Yes, so i means integer. And what is the initial value of age? So we have two options here. So we can write value as let's say 15. So this is the one way at the time of declaration, we have assigned value 15 to age. Or later you can assign it using assignment operator. So A is equals to let's say I'm written, I'm writing 17 here. So is will become 70. Now we'll check if age is less than 20. Then we will write low. Else if we will write age is less than or equal to 
40 medium or we can replace age with temperature that will be a meaningful case study so temperature will be i and uh, so let's say the current temperature is 15 a plus is less than 20 then we write it as cold if it is less than 30 then we write as medium and in else part we'll write as hot so here you can see this in this case in case one just we have check checked one condition whether it's greater than or less than and we have written if and else but in this condition we are using multiple conditions used. so in case one we are checking temperature is less than 20 if it is yes then it will print cold if not then again it will check for a condition and if the second condition is also not true then it will go for the third so let's see what is the output here for this case so yeah we have to activate it and uh, execute it so the cold is coming but yeah before that we need to skip two lines so that the output will be more clean so since the temperature is 17 that is less than 20 cold is printed here so in the live example when you will work on the any project so this if else condition will be used for checking the multiple uh, conditions so one if can have multiple values as well so here you can write with and like uh, one So for the same temperature example, we can check if temperature is less than 20 and temperature is greater than 30, then we will write not good. And in else part, we can write good. So if we'll execute this, then we'll get the output as good because in the very first condition, we are combining, we are checking two condition. First condition is less than 20 and the another condition is greater than 20. So similarly, we can write multiple conditions in uh, for checking the condition. So we can write it with and and the other variant is or. So in or any one of the conditions should be true, but for and all the conditions should be true to execute the section. So this is regarding if condition, then yeah, we'll go ahead. So in the conditional operator, we have switch also. So how it works? So simply switch is used when we check for equality. Here in this case, in if condition, we are checking with the condition like 
it can be checked for any relation like less than greater than equal to between or not equal to but in switch we check only for equality that means just we check equal to values so what is the syntax here so We will write a switch case here. This is for display purpose on the UI screen. And the condition is this we will write case. And after case, or we can write it as case also. Yeah. So after case, we need to define the uh, put the variable for which we want to check the equality. So let's say we will take the same example as uh, let's take another example. So for this we will define as age here and its type will be no not age let's say size follow and type is c and value is r so this is a color variable and we will store one character we have not given any length for type c that means this color variable can have a length of one. So it will be used to store one character. So currently R is assigned to the color. Now we will check if case color. So case color when R, then we have to write our business logic. So let's say in our case, just see, we are writing red color. Or we can define our logic also here. When B, then we can write it's blue color. Or instead of writing this, we can write our business logic. And when others, We can write others. Let's activate it. So yes, while activating, we got some error. It is saying activate despite of errors problem detected. So we'll edit it. And it is saying field B is unknown and the error is in line 62. So when we'll double click, so it is saying B is unknown. Yes, because we have not given this colon to this value. So after when a value is expected, but we have given a variable name and that variable name B is not defined. So that is why this message is coming field B is unknown. Now we have given the values. So is this program is error free? Yes, it is. So if we'll execute this, then yeah, we are getting the output as red because the current value is R here. Let's change it from R to B. And execute it. So we are getting blue as a output. So whenever a equality is checking of equality is needed then we use case or if we need to check with any relation then we use f. So this is nothing but a conditional operator.